your mind is not yours it is not young either it is centuries old maybe 3000 maybe 4000 maybe 5000 that is why every society is afraid of anyone who is creating a doubt in the mind anyone who creates a doubt in your mind about it is not accepted by the society you have to know that your mind is not yours and your search should be to discover your mind to be under someone else impact is to remain psychologically a slave and life is not for slavery it is a taste of freedom life is a taste of freedom there is something like truth but with this mind you can never know it because this mind is full of lies and when something is being repeated for centuries after centuries you begin to accept it as truth you can find truth when you put this mind completely aside and look at the existence with fresh eyes like a newborn child then whatsoever you experience is truth and if you remain constantly alert not to allow others to interfere with your inner growth there comes a moment when you become so attuned with the existence you are one with the existence only this experience of oneness with the existence is the religious experience religious experience is not jewish christian or hindu or mohammedan how can an experience be jewish hindu mohammedan or christian you never see the ridiculousness of it you eat something and you say it is delicious but is it christian hindu or buddhist when you watch your television shows do you remember that television was invented by a christian mind you taste something and you say it sweet these questions are nonsense it is simply sweet and delicious when you feel existence immediately without an mediator with no mind given by anybody else to you you taste something which has capability to transform you which makes you enlightened awakened which brings you to the highest peak of consciousness a greater fulfillment there is not a higher contentment there is not a deeper relaxation there is not you have come home life becomes a joy a song a dance a celebration and this i call religiousness i want each one of you to be religious but not a hindu muslim or christian because those are the barriers which will never allow you to become religious and you can see it clearly buddha is not buddhist he never heard of the word buddha jesus christ is not a christian i do not think he ever heard the word christian he never heard the word christian and certainly he is not a jew otherwise jews would have not crucified him if jews decided to crucify jesus that simply means he has dropped the mind that they have given him to carry his whole life and he is saying things that are not part of their given mind that are not part of the jewish tradition and jesus continuously reminds them of it he says it has been said by the old prophets and who were those old prophets all jews it has been said an eye for an eye is the law 
But I say unto you, if someone slaps you on one cheek, give him the other cheek too. This was not the part of the Jewish mind. Jewish God declares, I am not a nice person. I am very angry God. I am very jealous. Remember that I am not your uncle. These are the actual words. I am not your uncle. I am not nice. I am jealous. I am angry. And Jesus says, God is love. He has dropped the Jewish mind and that is the reward that he got for dropping the Jewish mind, the crucifixion. The crucifixion was the reward for dropping the Jewish mind. He was dangerous in the sense that he could create doubt in the minds of other people. Our God says he is angry, jealous, he will destroy those who are against him. And Jesus is saying that God is love. He is going against our vested interest. He was killed. He was not a Jew. He was not a Christian. Because the word Christian did not exist in the Hebrew language, the word Christ does not exist in Hebrew language either. He was called the Messiah. That is equivalent to Christ. Christ is a Greek word. It was 300 years later that Jesus' sayings were translated into Greek. Then Messiah became Christ and the followers came to be recognized as Christians. Gautam Buddha was not Hindu. He was born in a Hindu family, but he has renounced it. He renounced it the very day he started the search for truth. See the simple point. The Hindu need not search for truth. The Hindu has already got a ready-made truth. It has been given by the tradition, by the religion, by the scriptures, and he need not go into search. The day Gautam Buddha went in search for truth, he dropped the Hindu mind. And of course, he was not a Buddhist. That was a name his followers were given later on by Hindus to keep a distinction. But he had his own mind. To have one's own mind in the world is the richest thing possible. No society allows it. Every society keeps you poor. On your account, every society particularly those who are in power, either through money or through politics or through religion or through knowledge or for any other reason, those who are in power do not want it to people, those who are in power do not want people to have their own minds. It is dangerous to their interests. They want not men but sheep, not individuals but crowds. Those are always in need of being led, who are always in need of being told what to do, what not to do, who does not have their own mind, their own insights, their own consciousness. They are always dependent. The fear of anyone being different, being a stranger, being an outsider is always the same for the simple reason that no society have the courage to accept you. Because that society has not made your mind. That society has not made your mind. And that society cannot trust that you always be obedient to that you will never object about anything or create doubt about anything or be skeptical to anything. In India, cow is worshipped as mother. Anybody who has not been brought up as Hindu will simply find it nonsense. And this is not all. Hindus do things that nobody can even conceive of. They drink 
the cow's urine because it is holy and things like these. And it is not only the villages or the uneducated or the uncultured. Even in Mahatma Gandhi's ashram these things were used. Now, this is how it goes on. I would like that man, more than this collective madness, at least he has the courage to do something individual. It will look foolish to all the Hindus, but they will not look foolish to themselves, to their own mind. No society wants strangers, outsiders. Why is the whole world afraid of such people? These things are strange. It is a very strange phenomenon. When Pontius Pilate had asked three people who were being crucified the same day as Jesus and it was the convention that one can be forgiven and it was the people's decision. And Pontius Pilate was absolutely certain that they would ask, release Jesus, he was innocent. He had done no harm to anyone, but the Jews shouted, the high priest shouted, we want Barabbas. And he was a confirmed criminal. He had committed seven murders, rapes and any kind of crime in name and he had done it. But you should not be surprised because this man, Barabbas, belongs to the Jews. He may be a murderer, but his mind is still of a Jew. This Jew may be innocent, but his mind is no longer that of a Jew. He is an outsider and dangerous. Whereas Barabbas is not dangerous, what can he do? A few more murderers at the most, but this Jesus can destroy the whole structure of the society because it is only standing on superstition. If you go into the psychology of it, it is simple. All those terrorists have a conference in Germany, are acceptable, they have the same mind, same politics, they belong to the same society. All the great masters in the world have been saying only one thing down the centuries. Have your own mind and have your own individuality. Never be part of the crowd. Do not be a wheel in the whole mechanism of a vast city. Be an individual on your own. Live life with your own eyes. Listen to a music with your own ears. We are not doing anything with our own ears. We have our own eyes, but we do not use them. Everything is being taught and we are following. Deviation from that is dangerous. Think about it. That is allowed. That is why in the West philosophy has grown to great heights and depth. But it is always thinking about truth. It is like a madman thinking about sanity, blind man thinking about light. When someone asked Buddha, who are you? He said, I am a physician, I cannot show you light, but I can give you the eyes for you to see the light yourself. You cannot think about truth because thinking will be done your, by your mind, which is full of lies, nothing but lies. How are you going to think about truth? Truth can be found only when you have put your mind aside. The word that we use in the West is philosophy. No philosopher comes to experience anything. No philosopher becomes enlightened or awakened. He remains on the same ground as you are, as unconscious as you are. The actual word for philosophy in the East is darshan. Darshan means to envision. It is a totally different approach. This approach is 
by witnessing your mind, not by thinking, but just becoming a watcher of your mind and creating a distance between you and your thought, just seeing them as if you are on a hill and the whole mind and its traffic is going on. You are watching a television show. On the screen, the scenes keeps on changing, but you do not get attached to it. Down the valley, a moment comes when thought starts disappearing because their life is in the identity. Their life is the life of parasite. They suck your blood. If you are far away and you are not giving any juice to your thoughts, they start shrinking and dying. And when there is no thought around you, but immense silence, tremendous nothingness, just a watcher and nothing to watch, this is the moment you are freed from the fetters of the mind. And this is the moment of becoming a new life. Maharishi Raman used to tell his disciples that you should ask the question, Who am I? Am I this thought or that? And if you go on asking this question, and when you reach to the very core, you realize that you have reached the witnessing. But you may look mad to people. Because from this moment your behavior will be different. From this moment you will have your originality. You cannot be part of the crowd. People will think you have gone some way. It is strange. If you go into a society of blind people with eyes, nobody is going to believe that you have eyes. You must be having some mad illusion. Nobody has eyes. How can you have? Enlightened person in the West will be condemned as mad. People who are mad in the West are mad because you have created so much tension and anxiety and anguish. And you have given them such a rotten mind that it cannot manage. A point comes when it breaks down. When mind breaks down, the person falls below the mind. Hence, psychoanalysis has become an important phenomenon. In the East, there is nothing parallel to psychoanalysis. In the East, we have tried for a breakthrough. Instead of breakdown, it is a breakthrough. Breakthrough takes you above the mind and breakdown simply pulls you to a subhuman level. But for that, two society is responsible. It gives you too much ambition which it cannot fulfill. It gives you too much desire for money, for power which cannot be fulfilled. People go on postponing everything that is meaningful. Tomorrow they will laugh. Today money has to be gathered. More money, more power, more things. Tomorrow they will laugh. Today there is no time, but tomorrow never comes. And one day they will find themselves burdened with all kind of gadgets, money, and they have come to the top of the ladder. There is nowhere to go except to jump in the lake. But they cannot even say to the people, do not bother to come here. There is nothing. Because that will make them look stupid. You have become the president of the country and you are saying, here is nothing, do not bother. This is simply a ladder which leads nowhere. You will feel stupid. They go on pretending that they have achieved something. They have found. Deep down they are empty. Life is meaningless. Try to understand this. The society also gives them ambition. Ambition to reach the paradise, to realize God. 
But the ambition is against the ambitions of this world. They renounce this world. There is nothing but shadows. It is illusion. For thousands of years they have been. They have thought it illusion. It is worthless to bother about. Why not look for real? So they do not get mad in utter poverty, in sickness, in death. But you will not find them tense, anxious, and they do not need a psychotherapy. And these are the people who are helping the others to be seen. It is simply a question of understanding that the mind that we have is not capable of encountering reality. Because reality is contemporary and the mind is 2000 years old. Reality, truth is now and here. The gap is big and the mind fails to encounter reality. Mind has to go with reality step by step. It has not to lag behind and that is possible only if each individual has his own mind, his own individuality. If you are an individual, no group can claim a soul. They are all dead arguments. Only individual is a living phenomenon. We have to help the living phenomenon to be contemporary and to remain contemporary because what is contemporary today will not be contemporary tomorrow. You have to learn the way of flowing with the river with existence each moment. Die each moment to the past and be born again each moment to the new. Unless that becomes your religion, and this is the only religion, dying to each moment and then being reborn that very, that is the only religion. Unless that becomes your religion, you are going to be in trouble and your society is going to be in trouble as well.